Let's give the Lord the best clap offering for this morning. Parang uh, naninilaw kayo lahat ngayon. Meron ba may birthday? All right. Good morning. Good morning. Look at the person next to you. Tell that person you look sexy this morning. Ngayon lang, ha? Ngayon lumaga lang. Let's start the uh, Sunday morning with a joke. Question, what is the laziest mountain? Huh? It's Mount Everest. Last ko na yan. Last ko na yan. All right. So, speaking of rest, no? Alam niyo, a Sunday well spent brings a week of content. Do you agree with that? Huh? That a Sunday well spent brings a week of content. Welcome to uh, our Sunday morning sermon. It's about redeeming rest. No? Redeeming rest. It's about the biblical Sabbath. Tell the per- person next to, you, next to you, let's practice Sabbath together. So for this morning, there are things to uh, ponder or pag isipan in Filipino, uh, pagbulay-bulayan. No? There are four things that we need to ponder. Uh, these are, first, Sister Fe uh, read a while ago about after the accomplishment of God, and then He rested, and then He blessed the seventh day, and then He declared it holy. So these are the four things that we need to ponder this morning. Let's uh, look again our verse. If you have your Bibles with you, please turn on your Bibles or open your Bibles to uh, Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. It says here, So the heavens and the earth and everything. Sa Tagalog, ang, ang kalangitan at ang mundo at lahat ng bagay na nandito, no, and everything in them were completed. Ay natapos na. On the seventh day, God had completed His work that He has done. And He rested. At siya ay nagpahinga. He rested on the seventh day from all His work that He had done. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank You for this uh, beautiful morning for you are with us. Lord, we welcome you in this place. We declare this place a holy ground for you are a holy God. Lord, I pray that you bless your people, anoint their ears, anoint my lips, tell me what to say and not to say. Just your word. Let the Holy Spirit preach to them, Lord God. And let this be a life-changing, a uh, heart-changing, Lord God, message for all of us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. You see, let's look again in, uh, in uh, verse 1. It says here, So the heavens and the earth and everything in them were completed. Natapos na. No? Sabihin mo sa katabi mga tal, the person next to you, after accomplishment. After accomplishment. What do we mean by this? Alam nyo, if we never accomplished anything in life, it means we're resting the whole time. Kapag wala tayong natapos sa buhay, wala tayong nagawa, ibig sabihin, lagi tayo na mamahinga. Do you agree with that? So the heavens and the earth and everything in them were completed. We're talking about here, the completion on the seventh day, now, during the time of creation, God rested. And He was so satisfied with all the things that He did. Remember when He ever... When, actually, hindi niya nga ginawa. He just uttered the words and then it was completed. That's how powerful God is. And every time He did something, lagi niya sinasabi, Oh, it is good. In Tagalog, ay, napakaganda ng ginawa ko. 
No? But when he created the first couple, ano sabi niya? It's very good. Right? So dito, he, he's just trying to rest. He's just trying to look at what happened, what he accomplished. Unlike the world today, I don't know if you're familiar with Juan Tamad. Are you familiar with Juan Tamad? Huh? Tamad means lazy. Juan is the common name for a Filipino. It's like here in the U.S., it's John Doe, right? Or Jane Doe. But in the Philippines, when you call a person, generally, it's Juan de la Cruz. But Juan is uh, associated with tamad or laziness. You see, Juan Tamad is a character in Philippine folklore known for his laziness. Kilala siya sa pagiging tamad. Many stories portray his laziness to extreme stupidity and comedy. The most famous tale is one of where he chances upon a guava tree laden with a ripened fruit. The most famous no, na story ni Juan Tamad ay yung hinug na bayabas kung saan he was just waiting for the ripened guava, guava fruit to what? To fall into his mouth. Now, instead of grabbing the, 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 the guava fruit, no, he's so lazy that he just waited for it to fall into his mouth. Tell the person next to you, we need to move it. Diba? Even, even yung song na ma, there was this cartoon, ano yung song na yun? Yung, we need to move it, move it, move it, right? In Filipino, sabi mo sa katabi mo, uy, kilos na. Diba? We need to move. I mean, it is apparent to most of us that uh, our society is lacking much in this category. What kind of category? Industriousness. Or in Filipino, kasipagan. Too many people when, uh, want something for nothing. Or want to be rewarded for what? For laziness. No? Generation today, they will say a lot of things. They will comment a lot of things in Facebook, in Twitter, or whatever. No? And they will tell you, oh, you cannot say that. It's, uh, it's not politically correct. I'm offended. Oh, you cannot do that. And, and everything and everything. Oh, it's okay. It's all right. But first, pagutas ka muna ng pinggan sa bahay. Di ba? Dami nating na puna, na pero hindi man lang tayo tumutulong sa bahay natin. You see, Everyone wants to be a vlogger nowadays, right? Do you know that being a vlogger, being a successful vlogger, you need industriousness. Kailangan mo ng kasipagan. For you to be successful, there's a lot of hours of editing, there's a lot of uh, uh, thinking of content, going to places. For you to be a successful one. But a lot of people they just want to force you to subscribe to them kasi they just want to get the money from Google AdSense. Right? Kasi gusto nila shortcut. A lot of people will go to casino and hopefully they hit the 777. Are you familiar with that? Just as the Bible has much to say about hard work, alam nyo ba, it is not silent then also about slothfulness. Now, the Bible has a lot to say about being masipag or being industrious, but it also has a lot to say about Slothfulness. What is slothfulness, Pastor? You see, the, in Proverbs 12, 24, it says that the hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. Sa simpleng salita natin, pagpapalain ng masipag, ang tamad, hindi kakain. Ganun lang kasimple. Right? What is slothful? Slothful from the word sloth. Are you familiar with a sloth? A sloth is an animal na hindi tayo masyado talagang familiar kasi hindi siya nakikita sa Pilipinas. You see, how do you define this animal? This animal is so cute. At the same time, so ugly. <laughs> this animal is so, uh, so, uh, kumbaga, parang, alam yung teddy bear, yung parang hugable, lovable, at the same time, scary. Kasi may mga claws siya. This animal is so slow, no and parang lagi siyang inaantok parang laging gustong matulog na parang lagi mo siyang inehele di ba cute 
pero parang ugly. Mabagal, tinatamad, pero parang, you know, ang hirap niyang mahalin, pero nakakainis naman kasama. Uh, parang, alam niyan, parang nakakainis siyang paalisin, pero nakakaawa naman na hindi tulungan. E ba parang 40 year old na nakatira pa rin sa magulang, di ba? <laughs> di ba? It's the same thing. You see, here's the thing. Slothfulness, ang ibig sabihin, pagiging tamad. Slothfulness is a sin. Sabi ng Biblia, ang pagiging tamad ay kasalanan. People notice when others are hard workers. Madaling mapansin ng iba na kapag ikaw ay masipag. And they also notice when people are lazy. Even though you tell all the people now in the world that you are a very industrious person, even though you tweet it every second that you are an industrious person, even though you show a lot of pictures that you are an industrious person, oh, I'm busy today, I'm doing a lot of things, but if you don't have result in life, I tell you, wala kang pinagkaiba, kayo man tamad. Right? You see, life is all about result. You can tell and, you know, you can show everybody else that you can do this, you've done this, or whatever, but still, people, sabi dito, notice when others are hard workers. Actually, you don't have to tell it. People will notice it. And they also notice when people are lazy. Alam nyo, as Christians, it is important that we have a good testimony in regard to our work ethic. Amen? Employers will notice and appreciate it when their employees are industrious. Right? I remember there was this kid, no? I used to be a store manager in Jollibee. Are you familiar with uh, Easy Ten Recto? Dalawa Jollibee dun eh. Isa sa baba, isa sa taas. Yung mga nag-aral sa U-Belt. Ako yung store manager doon dati for so long, long the longest time siguro. Uh, it was in the early, late 90s, early 2000. And uh, I, was, I had this uh, crew, may Bible study group kami sa mga crew. And uh, sabi nung crew, there was this crew who told me, Hey, uh, sir, uh, are you a Christian? Sabi ko, yeah, why? I, because I saw you were praying before you eat. Oh, okay. Sabi niya, you know what? I'm also a Christian. Sabi ko, palaga lang ah. Galing mo ah. Hindi ko nakalata ah. For so many years. <laughs> you know, I didn't even, I didn't, it didn't even show. No? Sabi mo sa katabi mo, wag mong tularan si Juan. Do not emulate one tamad or one the lazy person. Why? No? Why? Because slothfulness is a sin. One of the most important things a parent can teach their children is the value of industry. If we have not trained our children to labor, we have not prepared them for life. That is the truth. Amen? You see, we need to retell the story of Juan Tamad. I'm so saddened that Juan Tamad is being hailed as the heroic, comedic person. Right? If Juan Tamad will be made into a movie, di ba? Ang bida dyan, si Naaga Mulang, yung mga sikat na tao, right? Tapos, Juan Tamad as in the hero. Come on, let's retell the story. Being Tamad is a scene. God is so uh, clear about how he became a role model that after he completed, after he has done with everything that he created, he rested. No, nag-reflect siya. Oh, it's good. Kasi may accomplishment. Di ba masarap sa buhay may accomplishment? A person who is not willing to work will no go far in life. Nor will he be useful to the work of God. Amen? Asa pa tayo. I remember when I was a calm speaker, no, it was a sem break, in Tagaytay, there was like a lot, around 150 to 200 youth that were uh, that, that attended and uh, the the person before me who spoke about being passionate no uh, in their in their godly living and then he has this testimony no saying that now you know I was called by God when I was in second year in college and God told me specifically that I should quit college 
and go to ministry and become a pastor somewhere else. And then after him, it's my turn. And I told the kids, you know what? When I was in college, I'm having a hard time because I'm not a Christian. I'm having a hard time in finishing college. I was, instead of four, I was six years in college. Because I, I, I kind of had a, a fun time working while in college. So, mas preferred ko yung mag-work kesa mag aral But when I got born again, I was in my senior year in college, I was told by God, and I shared this to the youth, I was told by God to finish college because that is your testimony for me. So, first and foremost, I I focused on school, and that year, I finished college. And then, God told me that I'll make you a head, not a tail. After college, I landed in a good job, and I asked the participants, how many of you are under my supervision at work? And a lot of them raises their hands. Kasi lahat doon, kuro ko eh. You see, the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. I'm not disagreeing with his experience. That is his calling. But if I will encourage the youth, finish college. Look for a job. No? Because whatever you will learn from the corporate world, you can apply it to ministry. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You will only move upward and never downward if you listen to the Lord, your God's commands. I am giving you today and are careful to follow them. Deuteronomy 28, 13. You see, the Lord is very clear. We are created. We are called to be the head, not the tail. The tail follows the head. Right? You see, no, after his accomplishment, no, he's so, he's so, uh, he, he felt so good that, no, dahil sa kasipagan ko, nagawa ko to, and uh, I need to rest. The Lord rested. Imagine the Lord rested. On the seventh day, God had completed His work that He had done. No? And He rested. Again, He rested on the seventh day from all His work that he had done. Another work, no, na naging trabaho ko, I was a, I used to be an HR manager or human resource manager. And alam nyo ba, sa Philippine law, you cannot uh, give a schedule, a work schedule, sa isang tao on the seventh day. Why? Because you have to pay him or her plus 100%. Do you know that? No? Because we are not supposed to work on the seventh day, even the law, the Philippine law, I don't know here. The Philippine law agrees that you have to rest on your seventh day. If your boss will call you to work on your seventh day, he or she has to pay you 100% more. Because even the Philippine law respects the day of Sabbath. I remember a story about waiting for our souls to catch up. You see, this is a story about an archaeologist once tried some... Uh, and once hired some Inca tribesmen to lead him to an archaeological site deep in the mountains. You know, we, we, we are familiar with archaeologists. They are the people who are, you know, uh, into the business of uh, excavation, trying to connect the future, the present, from the past, you know, ng fossils. After they had been moving for some time, the tribesmen stopped and insisted they would go no farther. No, huminto. Biglang huminto. Nag-stop yung mga tribesmen. Nahinayan ng archaeologists. No, bakit? The archaeologists grew impatient and then angry. Kasi nagmamadali siya. He's in a hurry. But no, no matter how much he persuade the tribesmen, would not go any further. Ayaw magsigalaw ng mga tribesmen. Bakit kaya? Then, all of a sudden, the tribesmen changed their attitude. Just all of a sudden, no, they just got up and changed their attitude. They picked up the gear and set off once more. Lakad ulit. Nagulat yung archaeologist. Ano nangyari? When the bewildered archaeologist asked why they had stopped and refused to move for so long, the tribesmen answered, Ano, ano nangyari? Ba't kayo biglang huminto? Tapos bigla na naman kayong tumakbo? Ano nangyari? Sabi ng mga tribesmen, we had been moving too fast 
and had to wait for our souls to catch up. Ha? Ah, ang bilis namin maglakad sa Tagalog, ang bilis namin maglakad na naiwan na namin yung kaluluwa namin. Imagine these people, no, they believe in a soul, but the thing is, what they believe is that when they move so fast, no, naiiwan nila yung soul. But still, they respect their souls. Teka lang. How about us Christians compared to these tribesmen? We Christians believe that we have souls. And we believe that wherever we go, our souls are with us. But the thing is, we don't respect our soul because we don't know how to rest. The unbelievers know how to rest. The believers doesn't know how to rest. Tatlong schedule, 15 hours, 24 hours, 18 hours. We don't know how to rest. Do a lot of things in life, no? To, to make sure that we are in this rat race. You see, there are different types of rest. One, physical rest. Obviously, you rest physically. There's two kinds of physical rest. Active and passive. Let's start with active. Active rest is that you are tired. Now, these, these guys are, these are Gila's uh, ministry every Saturday. These people, they're tired for the entire week. But they always look forward on a Saturday. Why? Because they love to play basketball. No? They will go here in second floor sa gym natin. They will play ball. And playing basketball is a full contact sports. Nako, napakahirap, nakakapagod. Pero why are they doing it? Aren't they supposed to rest? No, because they find rest. Active physical rest. No? Na-enjoy nila yon. That is part of resting. Another kind of rest is being passive. No? Obviously, this is being associated with sleeping. Sleeping like a baby. Di ba? Masarap matulog, lalo na pag malamig. Right? So, Another thing is mental rest, or they call the brain fog. Now, some people who work like for the entire week using their hands, their feet, on their, on their toes, uh, standing up, or, you know, physically they are working as in, tiring. No? Some of them, they just want to rest sa Santa Monica Beach and read their Kindle or read their books. But for people who are arts and letter people, who are you know into who, who who are studying the entire week, or people who are like you know managerial or supervisory, or people who are like into uh, just like pastors who are you know, who need to do a lot of research and do a lot of uh, reading. No, so for me, I don't enjoy. Before I used to enjoy this kind of mental mental rest or brain fog, but for me, sa trabaho ko ngayon. I have a different brain fog. No? I do a, a, other things that will make me happy and will give me mental rest. Now, this is what I do to, to achieve that brain fog or mental rest. I ride my bike. You see, he wants you to rest because he wants to use you. Amen? Do you agree with that? God wants you to rest because He wants to use you. Imagine a boss who wants profit in life. Right? Who wants money in life? That boss doesn't want you to rest. Gusto niya magtrabaho ka na magtrabaho para magpasok ka ng pera sa kumpanya niya. But your boss in heaven, He wants you to rest because He wants to use you. Using you for you to say, Yes, Lord, use me mightily. Yes, Lord, I'm here for you. You see, number three, He blessed the seventh day. Tell the person next to you, He blessed the seventh day. Now, in verse three, it says, God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy. For on it, He rested from all His work of creation. What do we mean by blessed the seventh day? He wants you to rest because He wants to bless you. Hindi ka lang niya gustong gamitin kasi gusto ka rin niyang i-bless. Diba? Tell the person next to you, God wants to bless you. 
Di ba? Sabihin mo rin sa kanya, kaya magpahinga ka. Right? So take a rest. If you no, will take a rest, here are the blessings that you will receive from God. Take a physical rest, He will restore your strength. He will give you long life because you will live a healthy life. If you take a mental rest, you will be more useful. If you take a sensory rest, no, you'll be more sharp and you can be useful to God. You can, if you will rest your being creative, your creativity, you'll be more productive. Imagine if you will rest emotionally. You will be an example to a lot of people. What do we mean by this? Imagine, you approach me, Pastor, I'm having a hard time in this life. I just want to I just want to have a counseling session with you. So sasagot ako and I will answer you. Sige. On Wednesday. Let's see each other, right? So emotional rest, I'm not an example, right? Because how can you go to a pastor who will, you will ask for counseling pero siya mismo having a hard time emotionally. So you need to have an emotional rest. It's very important. Rest socially. So that you'll be a good testimony. No? A lot of people will run in their Facebook page or Twitter or Instagram. Do you know why they run? Because they don't know how to rest. No? Doon nila binubuhos yung galit nila sa mundo. Ang galit nila kay Trump. Ang galit nila kay Duterte. Ang galit nila kay Biden. Ang galit nila kay Pacquiao. <laughs> I mean, they will use social media because they don't know how to rest socially. So, rest socially so that you'll be a good testimony. Another blessing that you'll get from God is that you rest spiritually because He wants to cultivate His relationship with you. He wants to, you to grow no, in relating to Him so that you'll grow spiritually. Number four, as we end, the Lord says, He declared it holy. Ano yung dineclare niyang holy? God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy. For on it, He rested from all His work of creation. He declared it holy. Paano yun? Here's the thing. We always forgot we're serving a holy God. Right? This is the always, this is the, this is the, this is something that we always forget. We're serving a holy God. We forget the holiness of God. We created God in our own image and likeness. But the Bible is saying that God created you and I in according to His image and likeness. But the thing, this world keeps on telling that, let's just create our God in our own image and likeness. We created the Jesus that will agree to us. We created a Jesus that will agree to us. Diyan ka muna, sabitan na lang kita ng sampagita, and then I'll be back. Because you are my God in accordance to my whatever comfort or, you know, whenever I need you, I'll, I'll, be, there. I'll be there with you. We, we created a Jesus that will agree to us that adultery is okay. We created a Jesus that, uh, that, that, hey, Lord, remember, it's in the Bible, si Robin Hood, magnanakaw, so kukuha mo na ako sa government, I'll get things from, uh, from my office, I'll get things from the petty cash fund of our office, and then, anyway, I'll donate it to the poor, Lord. We created a kind of Jesus that will agree to whatever is okay with us. Right? Lord, Okay naman yan eh. Christian naman, Lord, di ba? Christian pangalan niya, Christian Gonzales. We created a Jesus that will agree to us. You forget that we're serving a holy God. The Bible says, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Right? Holy. Holy. Ho- Ba't di pa sinabing holy? Yes. The thing is, in Hebrew words, there are only 8,700 words. So limited. They don't have a superlative. They cannot say that uh, Sister Maria is the prettiest among the ladies here. They cannot use the word prettiest, holiest, merriest, 
happiest because they don't have a superlative word. For them to emphasize on something that they are talking about that this is being superlative, they repeat it three times. So when they say, no, Sister Vita, you're pretty, 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 ibig sabihin nun, ikaw pinakamaganda. Kasi nga, limited yung kanilang words. That's why when they wrote it down, sabi dito, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Diba? There's a song. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Holy. Ho- pag sina- pag inuulit-ulit yung words, ibig sabihin, importante yun. Because God is saying that, come on, I am holy. I created you in accordance to my image and likeness. You didn't create me in accordance to your image and likeness. You follow me. I set the standard. Ay, hindi ko babaliin yung standard para sa'yo. Just to please you? Babaliin ko yung standard? No. There's a standard set by God. And that standard is holiness. Amen? Even in the New Testament, Peter wrote it that, For it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. Peter is reminding them, referring to the Old Testament, that God, when God said that, Be holy, the nation of Israel, for I am holy. Even our church, you see the old logo of the Church of the Nazarene, the official seal? You see there, holiness unto the Lord. Do you know that this denomination is all about holiness? Do you know that this denomination is uh, in the mission to teach people to live a holy life? But the thing is, a lot of people, they created their own story, their own meaning, their own definition about holiness that will suit their needs. Are you familiar with Phil Jackson? Phil Jackson is one of the winningest, if not the winningest coach in the history of NBA. He used to coach the Chicago Bulls in the 90s. No? They got three-peat. They retired to Jordan. They came back. Three-peat ulit. I mean, ang hirap burahin nun. Six championships. Hindi lang yun. Baka chamba lang. Lumipat sa Lakers. Champion ulit. Ulit. Mapapatanong ka. Now, you'll be, you'll be like, what is the secret of Phil Jackson? Right? Have you ever asked what is the secret of Phil Jackson? Ayun, hindi na secret. Sasabihin ko na. You see his hands? It means triangle offense. No? Whenever his players are being confused, he just shows his hands. It means triangle offense. What do you mean by triangle offense? Triangle offense in basketball is forming a triangle. Every time, any time, oh, sa any given situation. Because in a triangle, you have three options of how you will shoot the ball. Triangle offense means, you see, no, the offensive side are the white team. You see the two other white team, uh, team members, team players, na may bilog, no, itong part na to. When Phil Jackson will show his hands triangle offense, so these two members of the team will pull out from the arc. And then obviously, the two other defensive players who are in red will follow them. So that will remain uh, sa tatlong players na who will create a triangle formation. And then you'll see the person on top of the arc, the three-point area, no? His first option is to pass the ball to the person who is in a low post area. Ibig sabihin, there's a bigger chance of scoring. But you will see a defensive-minded team will double team that big person. Do you see the other, the other red person, the other red player? He double teamed the big person, the center. They call it the center. The option of the person who's being called the point guard and who's at top of the arc in number 12 is either he will give it to the first option or if there will be help defense, he will shoot it from the arc. But you'll see the defensive-minded red player will go after him. 
No, hindi siya iniiwan. So what he'll do is pass it to the right corner so that person will shoot a three-point shot. Do you get it? Unmolested. Because they have three options of getting the offense. As simple as that. As basic as that. You see, the thing is, let's all go back to basics. This morning, if you, if you will ask Phil Jackson what is his secret in winning all those championship rings, he will just tell you, go back to basics. If ever his people will be confused, he will just tell his people, go back to basics. Right? Triangle offense. Go back to basics. Now, how can we relate this to our spiritual life? God is calling us also to go back to basics. No? We have also our triangle offense. That is praying, reading the word, and having fellowship with our fellow believers. Praying as in, that's why in our church, we put emphasis in prayer that every Wednesday, our people, People are invited to be part of the upper Zoom prayer every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We pray for everything under the sun. All your prayer requests, binabato jan. The importance of prayer is very significant sa buhay natin. Now, number two, another uh, basic offensive triangle offense natin, read the Bible. You want to be a strong Christian? Read the Bible. That's why we have also every Wednesday our virtual midweek. It's in Facebook and YouTube. And we discuss yung, yung per book by book in a summary for you to be encouraged to read the Bible. How about fellowship? Number three, fellowship. No? Fellowship means, uh, for example, for our youth, Alab and Siklab. Alab are the youth Si club are the young people, young adults, no? They'll have their October 15 youth and young adults no, uh, bowling night. So, si Pastor Tin and si Sir Kled for more information. Ha? Nag-commercial pa ako. And invite a friend for fellowship. Anong purpose natin dito? The purpose is fellowship, number one. Second is discipleship. To disciple young people. And number three, no, to invite them to a relationship with Christ. So, hindi para magpadami, pero para magpadami ng kalidad ng buhay ng tao. Amen? No? Another kind of fellowship. We will have a family day. A bowling family day. Bowling din to. But this will be on November. Boys versus girls. No? So, magandang laban to. So, uh, this will be uh, sponsored by the Busilak and Dakila Ministry. The, the men and women ministry. So, 1 to 3 p.m. after church. So, these are kind of uh, fellowship. How about courtyard fellowship? Now, the thing is, if we don't, we don't have fellowship, there will be no discipleship. Right? Imagine if we will just meet here and then after the service say, hi, bye, goodbye. So, we, para, wala tayo pinagkaiba doon sa isang homeowners association na nag-meeting. Buti pa sila magkakilala, right? So, fellowship. Another kind of fellowship is Bible study fellowship. Uh, there's a lot of fellowship. Uh, summer camp fellowship. But one of the most important, basic fellowship. If God is calling us to go to basics, that would be, if, if there would be a triangle offense assigned from a uh, uh, from uh, Phil Jackson, dapat may sign din tayo sa Christian. Yung sign natin is to, re- to remind the person next to you, that person, take four. No? What do we mean by take four? Take four Sundays in a month. No? Pakisign nga, take four. Yan. Okay, may sekreto, may sekreto ako sasabihin sa inyo, ha? Atin natin lang to. Basic yan. When I was a HR manager, sabi ng, ng, ng empleyado namin, Sir, I should have a certificate, a medal, something, a gift. 
Because no absences, no lates for a month. In fact, for a year. Why would I give you an appreciation for that? Isn't that basic? <laughs> when I hired you, when I hired you, will I, will I ask you na, oh, can you please don't, uh, don't, don't be absent and don't be late? Diba? When I ask you, when I hired you, no, ano yung common na tanong? Are you, are you always, uh, are, are you into absences? Are you into tardiness? Oh, no, I don't, uh, basic. I'm always here. And now, if you do the basic, you're asking for an appreciation. You see, a lot of people, no, for them, going to church in one, one, once a month or three times a year, that would be their basics. But here's the thing. The surprising benefits of going to church are the four Sundays of glory. When I became a Christian, I never realized the importance of going to church and having fellowship with my fellow believers. Because when I decided to never be absent in the church, I witnessed salvation. Not just for me, but to a lot of people. I witnessed healing. Not just for me, but to a lot of people. I witnessed miracles. Imagine mo, mag-asawa, nag-iwalay, nagkakabalikan pa. Imagine mo, babae, hindi nagkakaanak, nagkaanak. I mean, those are miracles. I, I saw breakthrough in life. Drug addict, naging pastor. I mean, I saw glory after glory after glory every Sunday. If I was not there, I won't witness it. Now, if you will not be here every Sunday, you will not witness the salvations, the healings, the miracles, and breakthrough. And masakit pa doon, baka para sa iyo yung salvation, baka para sa asawa mo yung salvation, baka para sa anak mo yung salvation, baka para sa kapatid mo yung healing, para sa kapatid mo yung miracles, para sa nanay mo yung breakthrough. These are for all of us, the four Sundays of glory. Kaya if Phil Jackson has a triangle offense, we must have take four. Again, tell the person next to you, take four. Pakibulangan. Basic ha, huwag nga absent. Okay? Even, even, even. The Bible is saying and agreeing in Psalm 84.10, better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. Do you agree with that? Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. If there will be people visiting from other places, coming from the East, coming from the Midwest, coming from the Philippines, coming from Canada, if these are all my friends, every time they will go here. May basic route na ako kung saan ko dadalhin. Hollywood Boulevard, Bakit? Libre. Universal Studio, wag sa loob, sa City Walk lang, libre. Right? But first, <laughs> Griffith Park, libre. <laughs> But first and foremost, dadaling ko muna sa Sunday. Bakit? Court, courtyard fellowship, pagkain? See? Nadala ko pa sa church. Di ba? But here's the thing. Better is one day in your courts, Lord, in your courts than thousand elsewhere. Bigyan ako ng Panginoon ng thousand years, I would choose one day in front. Court means ito, square. Sa harapan niya, umiiyak. Ang sarap ng worship natin kanina, di ba? Palakpangan nga natin yung Panginoon at yung worship team. You did a great job. Worship team, you did a great job. no? At imagine nyo, a lot of young people are worshiping the Lord. Right? O nga pala, I, 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 I just want to praise the Lord no? and testify every time, every time. Kasi nakatatlo na ako dito eh. Na nag, uh, tumatawag sa akin, na nag-message sa akin, and uh, napapansin nila yung youth natin. Sabi nila, ba't ang dami yung youth? First, pangalawa napapansin nila, how come your youth are always busy? As if parang hindi sila mahirap utusan. Kasi yung youth namin, walang ginawa kundi magsungit at saka magmobile legend sa tabi. Hindi mo mautusan. Nakakaingit yung church niyo, yung mga youth niyo, galaw ng galaw, sila yung busy. Kami dito, kami matatanda nagbubuhat. Alam niyo, bless-a-bless ako. Honestly, 
Bless na bless ako sa youth natin. Honestly. You know what? Anong sekreto nila? Sabihin ko sa inyo, atin natin lang ha. Atin natin lang. Ang youth natin, alam man take four. Right? Ang youth natin, every Sunday, nandito. Honestly, nandito sila. Every Sunday, alam nila ang take four. Because they saw miracles, they saw blessings, they saw salvations, they saw breakthrough. Ba't ka aalis? Right? Thousand, thousand days, thousand years elsewhere? Better is one day in your court, Lord. Amen? Why go to church? Why go to church? Bakit tayo kailangan mamahinga? Ang Panginoon na mahinga after His accomplishment. The Lord is encouraging us, Hey, be industrious. Magsipag ka. Accomplish something so that you are worthy to rest. And then the Lord rested. Why we don't rest? Ba't hindi tayo mamamahinga? What is the reason? Ba't hindi tayo mamamahinga? Number three, He blessed the seventh day. It means that God wants to bless you. God wants to use you. He declared it holy. No, he's just reminding us that He's a holy God. Don't create another God. I am the only one God. And my first characteristic is holiness. So please don't create another Jesus aside from me. He declared it holy because He wants you to be holy. I encourage you this morning that let us redeem the important meaning of rest. Amen? The Bible says in Matthew 11, 30 as we end, come to me. All you are labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Alam nyo, meron pa rin yoke, meron pa rin burden no, to, to carry. Although it is light or even lighter because God made it lighter amidst suffering, amidst pain in life, we follow the Lord and take the yoke and learn from Him. Amen? Our lives will be light and easy. Because we keep His Word and live by it. Right? So, this morning, are you tired of, you know, paulit-ulit na problema sa buhay? Sabihin ko yung solusyon. Mamahinga ka sa presensya ng Panginoon. In English, rest in the presence of God. No? Simula ka sa basics. Take four. Take four. And you'll see if, okay, here's the thing. Take four, don't be absent. Sunday after, after Sunday after Sunday, be here. Kapag walang nabago sa buhay mo, ihin mo ako. Okay, I'll give you $100. Pero pag nabago ang buhay mo, you give me $200. You see, nobody else can save you today. Trust Jesus, right? Let us all bow our heads. Close your eyes. Let's pray. How do we trust Jesus? Let's admit that we are a sinner. Let's be willing to turn from our sin. Let us repent to God. Let us believe that Jesus died for us and buried and rose from the dead. Let's invite Jesus into our hearts to be our Lord and Savior. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for reminding us that we need to rest. We need to accomplish something. So enable for us to rest. And resting you, I mean, we, we need to emulate you in terms of resting. We, we, you want us to be blessed. You want us to use us mightily. Lord, thank you for you declared our rest day as a holiday. From the word holiday, where we become so merry and, you know, we, we do a lot of fun things. But the real holiday is holy day. Because you declared it holy because you are a holy God and we don't need to create another God who is suitable to our needs. Lord, we ask, Lord God, and repent. We are a sinner and we need forgiveness. Lord, we believe that Jesus shed His precious blood and died for our sins. Lord, I am willing to turn from my sins and I now invite you, Christ, to come into my life as my personal Lord and Savior. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give.